Hey, it's Luke. So when I was uh, looking at buying an M1 machine, um, my biggest concern was would Reason and Ableton work on it because those are the ones that I use daily. Um, but uh, Ableton, we don't have to worry about because uh, they went with the native version. Everything works, works fine on that side. Reason is not uh, M1 native yet. Uh, the good news is, though, that uh, they did mention on a Reddit thread the other day that uh, they had originally announced that uh, M1 would be in Reason 12, and they said that that hasn't changed. So uh, we just have to wait a little bit longer, but it it, it will be uh, native M1 compatible hopefully soon. I know they're working on the VST3 thing, uh, but uh, that that should be should be coming up pretty soon so uh so yeah so right now when you're running reason you're using rosetta and uh that rosetta translation layer can cause some little issues with some stuff uh but yeah i wanted to see if it if it had any issues with reason and uh, i'll i'll just tell you right now <laughs> it, it works it works amazingly well um it's actually really impressive i actually just gave it a really really good workout a few minutes ago and uh there was an issue when i recorded it, my my screen was sort of cut off so the the bottom was cut off so i was uh i was mentioning stuff about the cpu meter and um it wasn't even recording <laughs> that part of the screen so <laughs> i'm doing this again hopefully i can remember everything i mentioned uh originally but yeah so uh it works if you just wanted the answer will it work or not uh you can probably turn off the video it it, it really does um it, it does work and actually pretty well what i want to do though is give it a little bit of a, a a workout to see if we can we can push it a little bit to see uh how much uh, how much CPU it'll take to do uh, do some basic stuff and uh, and run some pads through it and everything. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, I've got Europa. As you know, Europa can be light on CPU for some stuff. It can be heavy for other stuff. And uh, let's just give it a quick try. What we're going to do is load the activity monitor. So what we're looking at here is at the bottom here, the CPU load. So you can see the graph. You can tell obviously it's doing a little bit more. But like the number is hardly changing at all. Um, and if you're wondering, this is uh, just, it's the, it's a Mac Studio with the M1 Max, uh, just the basic CPU. Uh, it's got, I ended up getting some, a bit of extra memory, but I uh, have extra storage, but uh, the CPU itself is just the basic, uh, whatever it comes, <laughs> whatever it comes with on, uh, as, as a base. I didn't upgrade any of the GPU or the CPU. And uh, yeah, really we're, if I do, uh, just make this. If I do, I've got six keys going at once. And like, not even really noticing it. You can look at the bottom here is the CPU for a reason. And then uh, this here will give you the, the CPU load for the machine as a whole. But really, we're not. And this one here, this line. Here's what we're looking at for, for a reason, but yeah, there's nothing at all. Let's try. We'll we'll try a couple different, a uh, couple different presets here. See if any will change. So, <laughs> interesting sounding one. And uh, what we might what we might do here is um, let's do some pads. Those are usually the heavier ones. So I'll do one in Thor. Nothing moving at all on the CPU there. Combinator, as we know, it's got a lot of stuff going in there. It can be a little heavy, but nothing makes it move. If you're looking at the bottom of the screen there, the CPU doesn't move at all. One thing that I've noticed that can give it a little bit of workout sometimes is um, if we go here and we run the alligator on here. There we go, alligator filter gate. So we'll throw that on here. There's nothing, like we're really, this one sounds like it's doing a little bit more. 
nothing nothing going on that cpu doesn't move at all if we bring it in the active like it's it's just flat it's actually pretty impressive there's one um let's look here this is one that's always given me a hard time on my on my older machine was uh the scenic hybrid instrument because it does it does so much it's bringing in two different instruments and playing around with with them and throwing some effects on there and whatever so let's just look at a few of these uh these presets but there's nothing okay so let's get rid of just get rid of the alligator for now and see if we can use we go a little bit longer sometimes that's where the cpu gets used up there's nothing i'm gonna try a whole bunch of keys eight nine or ten keys at once yeah i can see it move a little bit here but I'm trying to hit as many as i can with <laughs> the fingers i have It's going a little bit harder, but it's nothing like, um, and if you're wondering how I'm using the Ableton push, um, on, on reason, it's, uh, I'm actually using something from retouch control called, uh, it's a script called pusher, which basically lets you bring, uh, let, lets you bring a lot of the functionality of the Ableton push into, into reason. So it actually lets you, you can choose, you know, the, the key you want, you can do a whole bunch of stuff and deal with the transport and everything of starting, stopping and recording. So it's actually really nice to be able to use it in there. I'll actually do a video, a separate video about that at some point, because, um, it'll be an interesting thing to, to look at it at how we can use that in, in an Ableton project or in a, sorry, in a reason project, uh, when, when the machine itself was, was built for Ableton. So yeah, basically no matter what we do, we can't, can't push it any anymore so really it's uh yeah i'd say if you're if you've been holding back from from getting the uh an m1 machine for a reason specifically i don't think you have anything to worry about if you're not using if you're using vsts that are ready for m1 that's where you'll have you'll have the problems if um if they're not uh, M1 compatible, uh, you, you'll, you'll, or if they're, you know, they might work, but, uh, give, use up so much, uh, CPU. I've had that with, uh, one plugin in particular that <laughs> just brought everything down to, to its knees. So, um, depending on the VSTs you're using, uh, you'll be, if you're, if you're using the stuff within reason, uh, the recent extensions and everything, you will be f fine. Um, and, uh, and it'll just get better because once they, they go with the native version, then, um, then everything's running normally. If you're using the VSTs, make sure that, uh, they do work on this, uh, on, on, uh, on M1 and, uh, they are working on the VST, uh, VST3, uh, to be able to use those plugins in there too, uh, in the next little while. So you know, that, that might bring in some, some extra options. Oh, and we've been looking at individual tracks. Uh, obviously if you've got a whole, whole bunch of tracks going, it might add a little bit to the CPU load, but I've been using, I've been opening up some old files and, uh, there's some funny stuff in there. Well, I'll actually have to do a video of, of us going through some old tracks that I did around the 2012 in, in there. Um, cause there's, <laughs> there's some stuff that's so bad. So maybe we can, we can uh, sit down and laugh at that together. But, uh, anything that I brought in, even, uh, pretty heavy tracks, I had had no issues um loading them up so uh i was actually impressed with that i was i was assuming there'd be uh there'd be some issues as soon as uh as i was using a bunch of synths or whatever but it, everything seemed seemed fine so um and maybe i'll do a different video if you, you can let me know if ever you want me to do a, a video on testing some some heavier heavier tracks and see if we're able to uh to to push that cpu a little bit more but uh, no this is this is really impressive yeah, so hopefully this can help you out and it can reduce some of the worry about getting a, a new machine, especially a big change like this. There's so many, so many different little bits and pieces, um, but the reason itself, you're good to go. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.